They are absurd, uh, irresponsible, and they want proof of these dead voters. Well, I probably agree with the statement that I think it's uh, it's far fetched that there would be anyone in Lincoln County that would attend to vote, be involved in it, other than taking care of their own self or making sure they go to the public vote. Think about somebody voting something dead. That, that is completely out here somewhere, no no man's land, as far as I'm concerned. I mean, it's something that would not happen, and I don't care who makes those kind of statements. Uh, to me, they're far-fetched without any evidence, and I would be the first. If there's evidence that would support some type of voting irregularities along the way of voting people who have deceased, uh, I'd be the first to ask the prosecutor to step in and do something about it because it just should not be tolerated. I think what bothers me more than anything else, though, is um, I think there's hurt and harm done to the people of our county, or to just the county itself, by people making these type of statements without thinking responsibility about it. Are you able to hear him? Yes. Yeah. Uh, he's a, a little bit towards the guest here. Yeah, yeah. Our air conditioner's kind of. Yeah. 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 Um, so this is one of your own commissioners making these allegations. He is a Lincoln County Commissioner, one of the three. And uh, I, I couldn't, you know, understand why he would do that. I really don't. Uh, because without really substance of saying something, I, I think it is almost... Uh, criminal for him to make statements like that that would as far as hurting the, the county's image and things like that because it just it's not good as far as I'm concerned. I certainly don't approve of it. If I had something to say about the election process, then my thing would be to talk to the Secretary of State or talk to our own prosecutor and say, I've heard this or someone's telling me this, I would appreciate you checking into it. I really don't think it's one of those things that no bad deal with you guys, but I don't think it's one of those things that should be dealt with in the press. I think it's something that if there's something wrong, let the legal authorities deal with it. Well, from the outside looking in, it's kind of weird. We just went to a press conference where we're not allowed to ask any questions, where the county clerk calls it but doesn't even read his own statement. Um, so it's, it's kind of, it's just, it's odd. And, you know, you can see how it, he's one of the people that would have benefited from the absentee ballots that seem disproportionate, but may not be. Um, can the public feel safe that the process is going to work out? I mean, Well, I would certainly hope so. I mean, just because you have a statement of one gentleman uh, making accusations without giving names and you know, birth dates, registration, and those kinds of things, I, I think that's way off the barometer somewhere. I mean, if you can't tell me a name and a birth date where you're registered and if you went to vote, I just think you know, there's something wrong with that kind of assessment. Well, don't you think that the, the numbers just speak for themselves, nine to one, when it came to the absentee ballot? I think it does speak for itself that there's an effort put forth to make sure that people are going to change the vote. As I said the other day, there's three ways to vote. Early voting, Election day and absentee. Now, the question I asked the lady the other day, you tell me which one is more important. I think they're all important. But aren't absentee ballots only supposed to be used by those who cannot make it to the polls? There's about 10 reasons why, if you look at that application. Well, if they're not there, I mean, but they can, now people can early vote. Well, ain't no doubt, but people work out of the county and things of that nature. But I think if, in order to do that, if you question the integrity of those ballots, then I think that's what has to be done on a one-to-one. -one. I don't think you can go out here and just say, say all of them bad or half of them bad or a third of them bad just because the number's great. So I think that's where the conclusion is improper. But don't you think there have been concerns in the past and there have been arrests and convictions here in this county that would maybe raise some concerns and maybe people feel that if they don't speak up, maybe nothing will be done? Well, I don't have a problem with somebody speaking up and I certainly don't Condone somebody doing something wrong, but to try something without the facts, no, I can't agree with that. I think the facts should be laid out, not accusation, but facts. Mr. Give me names, give me registration, tell me the people voted, 
and you may convince me of that right off, but until I see that, I can't draw any conclusions. We were told that some of these people that he saw that Mr. Vance on the list were patients, former patients of his, that he had known to die. Well, I've, I've you know, seen the same statement you guys have. He has never said that to me, but I would tell him the same thing. Then give the prosecutor or whomever the names of these people and show that they voted, and it's not, you know, there's a lot of common names. There's two Charles McCann, in fact, in Lincoln County. Uh, lots of comments. So I think you have to pinpoint where the person is, where they live, what precinct they vote in, and then say, now, if this person votes, voted in precinct zero and he died two years ago or six months ago, then I think you got a problem. But just to throw out a name or throw out an accusation, I think that's very improper. Thank you.